Hi, I'm Sarah, one of the coaches here at Dumpling. Today I'm joined by our coach, Ashley, and one of our successful business owners, Matthew of The Grocery Guy, and he has recently relocated to Baltimore. Matthew started his dumpling business around 2018, and he has completed over a thousand orders over the past couple of years. Today, we're going to be chatting with Matthew about his business and how he has gotten to where he is today. So welcome, Matthew, and thank you for joining us today. Hey, how you doing? Good, thank you. Would you mind giving us uh, some information on how you got started or where you got started prior to dumpling and what made you want to start your own business? Um, well, all roads lead back to one of the more traditional gig apps, uh, Instacart. I started with that um, after a workplace injury, kind of took me out of the traditional workspace game, indefinitely still working on it. Um, but, uh, you know, quickly found myself basically standing up to bullies in that industry. And then there's a whole history of like labor organizing. And along the path of just making connections with organizing to you know, fight for better labor standards in the gig economy, I met uh, Joel and Nate and um, just began talking with them about kind of the issues that we were all facing together um, as the gig economy was like really getting entrenched into our economy and our, our lifestyles. Um, and what I always say and what, what they say is that you know, we started as a ratings app to kind of be like a glass door for like the actual worker side of the gig economy. And after a few or maybe even just one meeting with some fellow CEOs there in San Francisco, they found that they didn't have any interest in changing, didn't care what we had to say about them. As a matter of fact, like don't come back and don't bring this to us again. So um, as kind of, you know, my personality kind of lines up with okay well I really want to destroy these types of people and I think Joel and Nate kind of saw a similar opportunity not out of spite or just to destroy them but more so kind of out of a kinder way if there's a better way to do this let's try and do it and I was all in uh, after a few conversations and some input uh, had a lot of ideas obviously with the experience I had working for Instacart solely at that point um, and you know got the bare bones app at some point in, it looks like uh, late 2018, but maybe a little bit even earlier. And I started playing around with it. Saw some of my ideas in there, which were great. And you know, still today, you know, I always try to tell everyone to keep it simple. Uh, when we start adding bells and whistles, that's when things break and get confusing. So uh, I felt really good to be a part of that. And I was slowly but surely just organically building a pipeline uh, of clients from whether it be like Instacart customers who are like, can I get you every time? And figuring out a way to legally market that back to them, as well as like family, friends, and neighbors. And then COVID hit, and that kind of really expanded the business around a pretty solid uh, foundation of clients. So it was really good. It was really cool. It's awesome. Um, and then kind of off of that is, since, you know, just doing primarily Instacart, what has been the biggest difference for customers using the grocery guy instead of using a typical grocery delivery app? Um, like kind of what sets you apart there and what has been the different experience for them? 100% uh, the quality and expertise. The fact that I'm able to use my actual skill set, make the decisions for myself, my business, my community, and the people that I help. Um, allows me to bring like a sense of pride to it. So you're not feeling like you're just spinning a wheel for pennies to, to shoot out. You know, it doesn't feel like a black mirror episode. Uh, you, you actually take pride, you know, you, we wear our clothes, you know, in the store, I have hats and t-shirts and I, I love putting them on. Like I slept in the hoodie last night. Um, and you know, when you kind of Put that up against like people with like instacart lanyards and stuff and like it's like oh you see those in the store and you just want to kind of stay away because you kind of understand the business model you know it's just fast quality's out the window so like people are just running around and not caring and i don't have to do that and even when i'm doing instacart here and there like i still don't do that like i walk around and you know someone's waving me to a cashier the other day and i'm like hey man i slower the better for me man like i it's not worth the stress so being able to do that and not feel like you're a bit of data uh, in an algorithm 
that has 17 layers of machine learning working against you to get the most labor for the lowest, lowest amount of pay is not something I'm interested in doing. Yeah. And so what have you found, if anything, that was a challenge that you kind of had to overcome when you first started your business or even now when you're, you know, a good four years in? Uh, the challenge is always going to be in America, capitalist system is going to be the marketing of your services. Uh, it's very hard to compete with um, billions of dollars over the years of, of wasted marketing for companies like DoorDash, Instacart, and especially now that people are leaving traditional television and going to streaming services. You're just getting just inundated with DoorDash and Lizzo and Instacart and all this stuff. And it it makes me dislike the companies even more that I just have to see that over and over and over again. So I, I, I think, you know, it, it's hard to compete with that. But I think that also kind of does them a disservice with more of the intellectual customers. And they know to kind of like sift through that. And they find the quality in the neighborhood. It doesn't help that you know, we can go to stores that other people can't and we can do it all in like one one go for you. Um, so I, I've kind of found that, you know, marketing that aspect of it and the actual that I am an expert and a professional in this. And I know we've kind of thrown out that, you know, 10,000 hours makes you a professional. A lot of that data is like cherry pick and stuff, but I've definitely, you know, put in well over 10,000 hours as you guys all have too. So it's like, you, you you can put that into your marketing, but finding the tools and resources to compete is a little bit hard, but good old word of mouth in a small community. And if you, you know, have a small business that that can work just on its own. What have you, oh, go ahead, sir. <laughs> just say kind of going off of that, do you, outside of like word of mouth, is there any other marketing that you found that worked really well within your business? Yeah, I think um, pairing your name on your shopper profile with specific stores um allows you to be found in a google search even if you don't sign up for any of those kind of more predatory marketing services which i don't advise i don't use them people find me on the internet still somehow um i don't really use paid facebook marketing or twitter i don't really use instagram i don't use any of that I, my partner Alyssa, she keeps telling me to get on tiktok and do grocery stuff but i just i'm getting more and more gray hair as the days go on i just feel like i can't touch it um but one of the easiest ways is if you could find yourself a few neighborhood groups on like social networking sites like Facebook or Nextdoor or any of those and, and read the rules, make sure that you're not being bothersome or going against uh, the rules of the group, but post your services, see the need, see if people are looking. Hey, my grandma lives in Atlanta, Georgia. She's looking for reliable grocery because her groceries keep getting delivered down the street with Instacart and they won't refund me anymore. Boom. Hey, I do this, that. Put in your link to your 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 shop on Dumpling. And, you know, those are pretty sticky as far as, you know, at least using you once. Um, so I recommend starting there and then building out from there. Uh, other great experiences I've had with just marketing is seeing people in the stores with a bunch of children who are coughing, sneezing, having tantrums, getting dragged out, you know, wait for the right moment if you have that type of personality and have some marketing materials on hand, like a business card with a a scanner on it or something or just tell them hey you look like you could use some help i'm not trying to get into your business or anything but i deliver groceries in the neighborhood i would love to help someone like you you look like you seem like all the families i've already been helping over the past years blah 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 or look for not look for but if you notice say someone like in a wheelchair or having difficulties or the elderly those ones are a little bit more kind of tricky with you know, you don't want to assume they don't want to get out for themselves and do this stuff. It's really important for people to, to not feel lonely, especially now. But if it feels kind of right or, you know, you're in an area where people are still cordial to each other and talk and have small talk and whatnot, uh, to consider yourself lucky. It's amazing. People out here kind of look at you like you're crazy for even looking at them. I don't know. Um, but that would help, uh, you know, build community is talking to people, uh, you know, finding the problems and trying to solve them. I love how you kind of put that because for a lot of people, social media is either they love it or they hate it. It can be so overwhelming. And I like that the way you described it is such a happy medium. You don't have to do every single aspect of social media to still find neighbors that need your help and have that conversation with them, answer their questions, um, kind of solve their problem. 
and then get those people. And then those people, obviously their word of mouth can help exponentially. So thank you for describing it that way and being honest about the parts you don't want to do, because I think for a lot of people, that's, that's really relatable. Um, social media in itself can be such a big beast. Um, and it's always fun to see that. Well, for some people, it works great for people like you, it not being, advertising on it every single day, building in content hours and things like that. It It's not hindering your success in any way. Um, it's just a matter of doing something different and being comfortable talking in person about your business is another great avenue to do that. So thank you for answering it that way. That's so helpful. Yeah, there's really tons of different ways to market. And I think one thing that bogs people down is getting started is what I've always called and I didn't make it up, but paralysis by analysis. Uh, and then you couple that with our current kind of consumer psychology of now, everything now, and then you read all of these daily dots, success stories, and BuzzFeed of these, this couple that started this cupcake business, and now they're millionaires. And like that's not really realistic to the rest of the 350 million of us here. Um, so you got to kind of train your brain to think small and slow. You're building a business, and you're building a business that was like the backbone of our economy in like the 40s and 50s, the milkman and all, all that stuff. My grandpa... And his grandfather used to go around delivering, collecting the eggs from the farms in the Chicagoland area and then delivering them to the neighborhood. I actually just found that out. I was like, well, it's in my blood, I guess. Um, and then my grandpa went on and did that with, uh, as a florist and did that and had the trucks and everything. And I mean, they're really good jobs. And I, I don't think they're really ever gonna go away or at least not anytime soon. And just have fun with it and take your time and don't stress about, you know, BuzzFeed not knocking your door down that you've exploded this crazy business like it's it's not realistic some people do it I've never really been one of those people I just like to do it the hard way and and build it with my hands and and I think you know that's a good way to do it that's so valid to we talk about right like people that get so big and so successful and then you end up with the same situation as the apps where people are getting wrong groceries or expired groceries or things just kind of haphazardly bagged and thrown on their porch. Um, and so really taking your time is a great way to just do a better service, um, both for you, like you said, the stress, and then also for customers. Um, I will talk about one other sort of media marketing thing that has happened for you. I know over the course of the years, you've gotten a bit of media attention as your business, sometimes just as a local um, expert on the subject matter and with kind of your business name next to it. Um, kind of a couple questions there. How did that come about for anyone kind of thinking about talking to their local media? Do you have any tips there? And then also how has that sort of coverage when it happens impacted your, your business as far as, you know, the clients that you're serving and things like that? Yeah, it's definitely an interesting and kind of, again, the hard way of, you know, going through all these different loops and ending up in a completely different space. But what, you know, I'd mentioned the labor organizing, a lot of people know me from that. And uh, I was lucky enough to be kind of one of the faces and voices of a, a pretty substantial movement over the years that way. And I and, uh, had a great team of people around me at the time that, you know, we passed around a bunch of different media names. And so I had a somewhat of a comfort level with people in the grocery space and the national media at that point. And then working closely with Dumpling and Joel and everything, um, you know, was provided a, a cool opportunity to speak with like one broadcaster and from there, um, and they happen to be local to my city in Chicago, which was, you know, very easy. So it's, it, you know, it's not something that everyone can be offered and everything and have it done easily. Like, it's like, hey, do you want to do this real quick? But five in the morning, like drive on the highway and sit in makeup for like 10 minutes and feel really awkward. And then, you know, black out when the cameras go on and everything. But it was a great opportunity from Dumpling that allowed me to help grow my business. And I think anyone can do it without Dumpling saying, here, go do this. It's just that they know me, my expertise, and, and trusted me to get kind of what I was saying out there as far as talking about groceries and delivery in, the, in that space. But moving forward from there, like, um, just knowing what you're doing, um, you know, this, this area and this space is not for everybody. It's at, at this point in my experience in the locations I've done it. I would say about 40 to 50% of in-store shoppers of the bigger apps should not be doing it. And that number grows when it comes to like Uber and Lyft drivers. 
Uh, I just think that this isn't for everyone. And I think you need to, you know, come to terms with that, that this isn't just a piggy bank that you do some easy task and it spits out money at you. You, you really have to love it. You have to have an interest in it. Thankfully, I do. Um, I come from kind of a, I don't know if I'm using the term right, but it's, it's, it was spendthrift poor family. Like it's always just been like champagne taste on beer expenses because you only live once. Uh, so I love buying stuff, but I don't have a lot of money. So you know, getting to spend other people's money kind of scratches maybe an itch there, but also, you know, going to college for marketing and also like, you know, media, uh, it's just a perfect kind of marriage of like the flashing colors and the sleek designs and, and all the psychology behind all of it. And then you couple it in with tech, having grown up with the internet, uh, the creation at least, and the adoption and the use of it, um, you know, allowed me to use my skill set to not just my advantage, but to help the people around me uh, learn, grow, and also just get food so they can survive. Um, and you can like reach out to your local news. Uh, right now, grocery is a huge issue, whether it be with egg, the price of eggs or inflation, whether it's real or not, whether it's manufactured, um, even just like the fun marketing, like become an expert in that stuff. It's really fun. And there's still so much more I don't even know. Um, and you can like kind of highlight some of that uh, in your local news while promoting your business. And this business has only got like a 2% to 10% like kind of market reach right now, even with Instacart and DoorDash, Ship, Spark, all this stuff. So it's only going to grow. Um, so I just think, uh, check it out, do some research and, and really kind of dive into it. And you will have success regardless of where you live, uh, whether it be rural, city, suburb, whatever. Um, just be really good at it. And they can't deny you, Steve Martin. Yeah. My favorite example of the media that you've done, it was a very short clip on like a TV media. And it was during the time when there was a bunch of inventory issues leading up to a big food holiday. And it, because you knew about food and you cared about it, all you had to talk about was, Hey, if you can't get this cranberry sauce, here's the easy way to make it. Here's the other thing that you buy. And it was so short and sweet and so simple, but it just, showed confidence and um intelligence surrounding it and then it was just it wasn't you saying hey come order for me right now this is what i do this is how much i charge it was more so just i'm an expert and it was kind of next to your business name and it was something that was so simple but just so impactful just those few minutes and so you've done a great job of really knowing this is what I do and just being confident in that and having those conversations. Um, and so thank you for talking about that too, because that has been an example that we kind of talk to people about time and time again, is just be an expert on what's happening, what's happening with eggs, right? The person who can get you through that is a personal shopper who kind of knows other smaller stores or um, maybe where the best deal is or what has the best inventory right now, because we're in all the stores all the time. So um, just being able to highlight that next to your business, not even saying, Hey, make I'll go shop for you and solve this for you, but kind of giving people the tools it still makes them want to order from you because they're like, oh, this guy's an expert. Why should I waste my time figuring it out? This guy already knows, you know? Um, and so that is just such a key piece. I think it describes overall how you function in your business and help your customers is just being knowledgeable about what's going on. Thank you for that. I'm horrible at taking compliments, even though I have a massive <laughs> ego, but uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, I, I, I'm just fortunate, you know? Um, do I have like a million dollars? Am I, do I have people working under me or anything? No, I don't want really that. Um, and I think kind of at the time when I was doing the new stuff, I really couldn't handle any more business and I still can't. Like I max out at like three or four orders a day because I have a really wide radius, um, which, you know, I don't advise anyone to do. I just have a special lifestyle that allows me to kind of adopt that. Um, but yeah, no, it's just fun. I think people should reach out to whatever they're comfortable with, whether it be local news, national news is going to be a little bit harder. Um, but even like, you know, there's a lot of business owners uh, that reach out to the Chamber of Commerce. I just learned a story about how an art gallery owner in Chicago in like the early 90s, like basically started one of my old neighborhoods, Chamber of Commerce, just by going around and meeting the community, talking about to the small business owners and, and helping them, you know, achieve success in their small communities. And now it's just a thriving art scene in like West Town, Chicago. Uh, so that was really inspiring. Like, I'm not really someone who's going to walk into the Chamber of Commerce tomorrow and be like, hey, 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 everybody, hey. but, you know, it, it's it, it's still something that's, you know, beneficial to a lot of people. And, you know, check that out. And, 
you know, try everything. Why not? Exactly. Well, you had kind of, so you had mentioned earlier that dumpling is not necessarily for everybody. And because you've come from such a huge gig background, I mean, you are not only working, we've worked with you in the past, uh, because Ashley and I also worked in the gig economy. So, you know, we know you from back then, but so what would you say um, to somebody who is maybe interested in dumpling and they're coming from the gig economy, but they're not sure whether or not dumpling is the correct fit for them because it is such a different platform and such a different business than what they may be used to. Is there like a certain type of person that may be best when it comes to building a business versus doing gig work where you just get those orders kind of on demand? Um, and what would you kind of say to those people? Uh, yeah, I think um, it, there's a range of different personalities that it could work for. I consider myself uh, an extroverted introvert. Um, so like, you know, when I'm quiet, I'm quiet. But when you need me to talk, I can talk because when I'm quiet, I'm usually like researching or, you know, thinking about something because it never shuts off. Uh, so it's good for that type of person. There's tons to like keep the mind busy with as well as the body. So people who are, you know, into like physical fitness and things. But the way I talk about this kind of aspect of the economy employment is with full time in mind. I think we're already operating in the future, whether we want it to be the future or not, it's coming. Uh, in Colorado, they've already basically fired all of their grocery workers and rehired them on as contract workers. Alyssa right now has a job at FedEx in a warehouse and admin, but tells me that they have some type of flex schedule where you can work whenever you want and you're considered like an employee and stuff. So I, I, I'm never going to be working for someone again in my life, whether I stay poor or not. Uh, great glass, double walled. Nice. Um, <laughs> there you go. That's the way to go. Good products. Um, so like, I, I think if you're someone who's already working full-time in the gig economy, you know, compare it with someone who's working a traditional job. They're a lawyer, right? And they're working in the, at this really crappy law firm that treats them badly. You know, they're, they're not a good fit, but they can't like quit but they feel really bad about like looking for another job and they're not making money at the other job as they're looking to switch over. But in the gig economy, you're here working for DoorDash or Instacart or something, and you're just getting screwed over every day. Um, as long as there's like no tipping in your community and it's getting suppressed every day, but you could start up a dumpling shop and, and slowly build it and then just jump off this train onto your own thing. And that's kind of what I think most of the successful people do is, they're not like, all right, I'm done with the gig economy. Let's see what Dumpling has to offer. That's a way to set yourself up for disappointment because the only, the only failure there is not from like the company and the tools they offer, but it's at, at you with unrealistic expectations. Um, and I already talked about how like, it's just not realistic to just like jump in and make a million dollars a month or even like a thousand dollars a month. Um, so I would say for the, the personalities that really know what the gig economy is about and, and do it anyway, knowing what it is and uh, want something better for not only themselves, but their community. Definitely look at Dumpling and then start finding those creative ways to market to your best clients from the other apps. Uh, and just as a word from non-lawyerville here, once you swipe delivered on any order, according to most terms and conditions, you are no longer like contracting for that company and that customer specifically. So you can potentially mention your other service at that time. If you do get deactivated or fired for that, like reach out to me on Twitter and I'll see what I can do to help. Um, but I'm like, if they ever do that to me, man, it'd be so fun fighting that. Um, but that's what I intend to do out here in Baltimore is I'm, I'm doing my market research right now, uh, finding out where the, the neighborhoods are that need the help, want the help, can pay for the help. And then I'm also looking at the neighborhoods that want the help, need the help, and can't pay for the help because something that I did in Chicago was I like to go to the North Shore addresses, you know, the home alone house area, and, and basically use their ability to pay what I'm worth to the people that would love to pay me but can't, and then kind of subsidize those deliveries because, again, I have a non-traditional lifestyle, no kids, nothing, uh, so I can just, like, do stuff like that and not, like, have resentment, per se. Um, and I kind of forgot the question because I talk a lot and now you guys got me going on all this stuff, but um, the personality types, the go-getters, I think, I think like the people that want to hustle the apps, but not out of a sense of spite that just want to hustle because they're hustlers, stay away from dumpling. It's something that you attach your name to and, and you want consistency and repeat business. So I've, I've heard stories of some people like 
you know, during the height of the pandemic craziness when everyone was weird brained, um, you know, they were like trying to like use it to like tack on extra fees and gouge people. And then they were like, why aren't I getting business? It's like, well, you don't understand business is, is the foundational yeah. part because you can't do that to the, your neighbors that, you know, back in, back in the day, they would run you out of town, snake oil salesman type stuff or throw you off cliffs, do whatever you can't, you know, this is, you don't poop where you eat and they're going to poop on you if you charge too much for what they're eating. Um, right. So um, I think it, it, it hopefully will be a natural kind of uh, uncovering of this app as dumpling grows. And I think some things that I have planned for the coming months, hopefully will help that a bit. Um, I'm thinking about starting a whole channel into how I'm going to build a replica of my business in Chicago in Baltimore. Um, whether I have the stamina and energy to do that is yet to be decided. But I really have always liked the idea of kind of traveling around the United States, building small delivery businesses and then handing them off to other dumpling owners who were maybe struggling to market or doing things like that. Like, like right now, I still have to set up a Zoom conference for a bunch of shoppers in Chicago who are basically hope, hoping that I break apart my pipeline from Chicago and they can help the people in the Western suburbs, the downtown people, the North Shore, um, the West suburbs and, and things like that. Um, and I think that would be something just fun and interesting to do. And you can do it on this platform, which is great. That's such a important thing to talk about because I know when I moved in my business a couple of years ago, um, it's hard, right? You have your clients that you're used to. And I had to really prioritize at first because I was within driving distance, but not a comfortable one. Okay. These are the couple customers I'm going to keep. And when I'm in town or I will schedule coming to town to help them. Um, but then obviously this is before gas prices really shot up. I'm never going to drive an hour to do an order now. Right. Um, and so finding some like-minded shoppers who were kind of similar policies and pricing who could care for my customers well, and having that sort of conversation, handing some of those customers over the, it was fine for the customers. They didn't have to go back to one of those apps where you have to have an annual membership or you're limited in stores or getting up charges on your store stuff. Um, so a nice transition for them, but it was then kind of trying to come to a new space and kind of replicate my business. It was great that I came with all the knowledge, right. And all the experience, but not necessarily the relationships and the word of mouth. Um, and so it is an interesting thing to dive in deeper to. I'm excited to see where that goes for you. Um, because obviously, like you've said, we've had years of experience, right. And all these great sort of like honed in skills as far as how to grocery shop for people and to do it really well. And with a lot of compassion. Um, and then how do you do that where you don't know anybody? So, um, we will definitely stay tuned and kind of find more information when that happens for you. But um, it's such a such a neat idea moving forward. It's so different from where your business started. Yeah, it just should be fun. Hopefully it kind of works out. And a uh, question for you, how, how hard was it for you to like leave your your previous customers? Did you find difficulty in like peeling away from that? I did just in my own sentimental reasons. Um, this was during the pandemic. And so some of these customers, you know, you're the only person they talk to. Um, or if they come out to meet you outside, I was still doing a lot of porch drop-offs, but you were really the only person they talked to. Um, and such an insight into the real world for them if they were staying home. Um, and so that was hard. And it was also during a time where it's like, I don't want to run around in person face-to-face -face with a bunch of people and talk to them because of COVID, right? And so right. that was a challenge. Um, and just, yeah, leaving those people who they kind of become like your friends and your family. Um, and so we still do Christmas cards back and forth, right? I just don't deliver them their groceries anymore. So um, having to let go a little bit, it's kind of like moving away from your friends in a way. Um, and just knowing that, gosh, those are perfect customers. It took so long to find those perfect customers who really respect me and what I do. And um, how, how am I going to find another one of those? Right. Um, so it's a, a little scary more than anything, um, it ends up working out, but it, in that moment, it's kind of like overwhelming because you're like, if I let them go, can I ever find another one of them? Um, and 
yes and no, right? You'll, you'll find other people to serve you well, but you're not going to find that exact person. I know it helped me a lot, uh, knowing somebody else in the area that could take over for my clients. And I knew she was going to give them the best possible service. So they weren't going to have to, you know, go from me where it's like, Oh, I get everything that I want to somebody where it's like, eh, is it going to be good? Um, so I was just so grateful that I had a relationship with somebody in my small town that just happened to do dumpling as well. And I could say, Hey, I've got these clients that I just, I can't drive an hour to go serve them. Like it's just, it's not going to make enough money on my end. It's not going to be, you know, worth my time as much as I would love to do that. Um, and she's able to do that for me. So it definitely, if it wasn't for her, I would have, I probably would have just kept driving until I eventually right. found somebody because I, I don't want to leave them hanging, you know, like right. I know it's a job, but like Ashley said, we had a relationship. I mean, they treated me so well and I treated them well. And it was just, it's so hard to sometimes find that. It's not that there aren't other customers out there, but you find yeah. them, you, you want to hold on for dear life, you know? Um, so, yeah. And it was just nice too to be able to tell another shopper like, hey, this person, their kid has this allergy, you know, those those facts that I had learned over time to kind of give them that head start, that part did feel really good, you know, that um, the person that was taking over after me was newer to the platform too. And so, like you said, it was kind of my way to give back and to kind of help somebody else but to do it with all those insights I had gained. This person really likes the store. They prefer this day. They prefer these items. That definitely helped it a lot. Um, helped me be a little bit less sad about it. Um, like Sarah said, just knowing that there was someone else that was going to care for them. I wasn't just leaving them in the dust. Exactly. Yeah, I think I'm not at that part yet. I'm so sad about leaving them. There was like tears shed, all yeah. kinds of stuff when I was leaving. And I'm still getting messages as of like even last night. Um, and a lot of my customers, I had a smattering of customers, the ones that I never even saw, but appreciated me through the door. Um, ones that I, you know, gloved up and masked up and visored up and, you know, they're beat fighting cancer and I would still go in and put everything in the, in the fridge and stuff because they didn't have anyone. Um, and, and, you know, from the young savvy tech people that are like, man, you know, well, now we got to go back to the other crap. Uh, like I'll get someone for you. So I, your guys, your guys' stories and how you guys were able to hand them off kind of makes me excited because there's a team of people in Chicago, like I said, with varying degrees of experience that I'm excited to kind of help them grow, whether it, you know, be, I think two of them have their own dumpling platforms already, just kind of aren't really figuring out the marketing just yet. Uh, I think I can drop some their way and then a bunch of disgruntled Instacart shoppers, but like long-term ones, familiar names, you know, that you know, if you ask for one personality type that it's like kind of our personality type, like the ones that are, are vocal and care and know right from wrong, like that's the personality type that should do dumpling. Uh, but also with some shields up because, you know, we can be taken advantage of, uh, of by certain customers, like with long driving times and coercing us to do things that, you know, we know we're going to do all the kindness of our heart. So you've got to kind of keep that in check as much as you can before it gets out of hand. Um, but other than that, I'm excited to kind of hand off and excited to do that after you guys sharing your stories about it, um, which is fun. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think all three of us were kind of here before there was a lot of people on the app, right? We've obviously seen it go from not really an app to an actual app. Um, but within that, when we started, I remember I felt like I had to do the whole area because there was no one else and I was the only alternative to the big apps. Um, but by the time I moved, there was a handful of other people, um, which was honestly so reassuring. It was like I could lift a load off, you know, and I didn't have to be that save the world type of person anymore. I could finally just take a notch down and be my business. Um, and it, I found that very like a, a relief. Um, but now it's, you know, they're, it's helpful having other people in the area. I know a lot of times people are scared, like, no, there's new shoppers in the area. There won't be enough customers for all of us, which we know oh, is not realistic, but, yeah. um, it, it was nice. It was nice to be able to let go of some of that a little bit easier. Yeah. I think one of my biggest things as a successful business owner, owner on the platform is it depressed me that there weren't more around me in Chicago, uh, I always kind of talk about it. And I just think people, you know, in, in larger cities are a little bit more like 
claws into the gig economy with that go, 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 go nature of it. Like, I don't have time to sit and figure out all this. I just, I know Instacart gives me this and I know Uber Eats gives me this. I know DoorDash takes this from me, uh, basically. Um, so, you know, it, that's something that, you know, people come into dumpling with this like dog eat dog mentality when it's actually the opposite. It's you want more of you in your neighborhood and even like in on your block if you can because you're one person and this platform is still so young and, and early and new that there's not running really people building out traditional businesses with it where they have multiple people working under them and trucks and delegating all this stuff. Like, don't think that to start. Like, if you're that type of person and you have the skill set, the training to kind of do that, you can use this platform to do that and people do do that. But as far as like competition, like just be good at it, you know, and, and the price evens out. And if you're not, you know, crappy to your fellow shoppers, like you're all going to have enough to be successful together and you're going to make each other better by having, you know, basically someone to back you up or someone to answer questions or, you know, someone just understands the lifestyle that, that you can kind of confide and relate to and, and build your businesses together. You know, it, it's, you really, it is kind of like starting your own Etsy shop, but not because like you're, you're there in the neighborhood together. You know, it, it's not like, you know, you're starting a fancy lamp shade company on Etsy and then like your neighbor down the block, block started the same thing and she's undercutting you and, and her lampshades are a little bit better. It's like, well, that can kind of happen, but because of the time involved and our, our personalities and lifestyles, it, it's not super realistic to, to get really stressed about that at all. And the more you stress about it, the, the kind of more your percentage you're going to have it failing yourself. Yeah. Uh, like you so. said, you, so we're, we're building relationships with our clients, right? So you can have 15 other dumpling business owners in your area. That does not mean that your client's going to up and leave you. If they're happy with your service, with the way that you're doing things, they're not going to go searching for another shopper. Um, so it's not really like you're not competing with each other because once they find you, I mean, I've had my clients for four years. He probably doesn't even know there's other clients or other shoppers that could technically be doing his business because he's happy with me. He doesn't need anybody else. So keeping your clients happy within reason, I don't mean literally bending over to everything that they want or say, uh, but keeping them happy, making sure your prices are within that reasonable range, but don't be going over and looking through all of the people on the geo search and saying, well, this person's cheaper. I need to lower my pricing. It's you're, 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 going to you're wasting time and resources doing stuff like that when you could be doing much more valuable things for your personal business. Definitely. Exactly. Exactly. Put your own person into your business and the people who are a good fit for you will kind of gravitate towards you. Um, and maybe the person down the road gravitates a different set of people. Um, Absolutely. Where, Absolutely. I mean, you can help each other, but yeah, you're not exactly the same, which is also kind of nice. Which kind of goes into the, the next question is like, what's your business niche or what do you provide that either another gig doesn't or another business owner? Because obviously we all have our own expertise when it comes to our business. I work really well with, you know, if people have pets, I know a lot about animals so I can help them within the pet store. Um, and so what is your business kind of niche or service that you offer? Because of the way I organically kind of built and grew my business it kind of is an outgrowth of me like my human body my person the brain inside of it and like you kind of just said like you're like a lot of like-minded people kind of gravitate to that they're the right customers are a, a product market fit if you will uh so like my clients tend to be like i don't want to say single educate because i have i have clients from every walk of life but the clients that i think i really care about are the ones that you can't really define uh man because like you know from a 70 year old woman who lives alone down to like a 27 year old like like guy who works in the tech industry like there's all a part that i enjoy about them but i think the main thing is that i don't know as i near 40 like i've met a million upon millions of people in my life and these are people that are just real authentic people which is like oh aren't all people authentic no, they're not. And you know what I mean by that, if you're going to be that person out there that's talking about semantics. But so like, I think like that authentic experience, I'm me, I don't pretend to be someone else. And what I do, I, 
swear in the chat. I, I have opinions. We talk at the door about politics or whatever, and we get fired up. And I think like I work best with that type of person who kind of has a good head on their shoulders, um, trusts me to do what I need to do in the store um, for them. Um, to maximize their experience, whether it be saving money or getting the right product and, and getting it there on time and not broken or smelling like cigarette smoke or whatever smoke. Um, and, and it's just really hard to define. And I, I wish that for everybody is that their business basically become like their coat of arms their with their mission statement of their life. And mine is just help good people at all costs. And if you have time, help some bad ones too. Um, and if you have any extra time, try and prevent the bad ones from hurting good ones uh, as well. Thankfully, I have a lot of time. And I think that's done a really good job for you at attracting the people to you that care about someone being paid fairly for the work. They exactly. care about someone having fair working conditions, right? Um, and so they align with your value in that way, regardless of what demographic they're from. Um, and it it's so different to go from just being a number on an app where there's support that will never help you and does not care about you to having customers who really care like, hey, the roads are bad. Are you doing okay? Hey, have you been sick? Hey, how was your trip? Like they actually want to hear the answer. It's a big difference, right? Or if you're saying, hey, I have to reschedule something's come up. They're not angry they're like a human being to a human being like how you would talk to your friends it's a huge transition to just go from being kind of a number to being a respected human being um and those right people those right fit they they're flexible they're like hey yeah something came up i can reschedule my order or hey yeah that's okay um you know feel better and i'll order in a few days whatever it may be. And that's just not something I know. I wasn't used to that when I started my business. It was a very big change. Yeah. You just kind of made me think of something as I'm in a new location and you know, the, our country split up into different regions. Right. And I come from the Midwest, born and bred son of a waitress. So I have thankfully that waitress in me in the DNA of like, you know, Hey, what are you guys doing? All that. And then like that, kind of just folksy like Midwest where I do care about the stranger and I'm interested in what they're doing and I, I like kind of small talk and, and things like that and um, so to find like a, a career that allows you to utilize all of that I feel really lucky as well but finding it you know in the different locations would be a little bit squirrelier and different um, so it's really interesting even just to use it as like a just a psychological experiment and like looking at the different things that are natural to me that work where i'm from where it's like oh everyone's so nice in the midwest and everyone you know all that and we're actually nice whereas like out here it's like people pretend they're nice but they're actually mean and then in the south they're just mean and i don't know what the west is doing you guys are like <laughs> we don't know right either <laughs> yeah right uh you guys are all too new out there to really have an identity i guess um i think it was something but i forgot oh, that funny meme so it's interesting out here and the driving's different. Um, yeah. Super aggressive, even though Chicago's number one for bad driving. I don't believe the date with the data I have, it's not accurate. Um, but yeah, very interesting. And I think well, going back to that person or who's the type of personality that's gonna thrive with their own business on dumpling is, you know, someone from that type of world, blue collar, you know, waitressing, bartending, a lot of that, which is what the early gig economy and current gig economy preyed on to, to you know, do their numbers, but then didn't take care of them. Uh, whereas this, like Dumpling does take care of the people that use the platform by keeping it consistent, keeping it, you know, relatively like free as in like you get to choose your rates and your radiuses and stuff. And even though my advice has always been like, keep it simple, um, all of the most of the new features are, are all things that have actually helped, like, uh, you know, the automated marketing and things like that. It's really cool. Um, I forgot to turn it off the other day. So I got all these messages like, oh, my God, are you back? Are you back? I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, I think it's still on. I got to turn it off for the next round. But, you know, just really good stuff. Uh, really excited. And, yeah. 
Yeah, it'll be fun to see, you know, obviously in the time we have our business, we grow as human beings a lot. There's just so many things that we're learning. And so it'll be interesting to see if you attract kind of the same people that you did a few years ago, or if it's a different type of people now. Yeah, um, that's probably what I was getting at. That, I feel like that's what I was getting at. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Perfect. And I think one other big question for you, um, if you were talking to someone new on the platform, just starting out, just starting to kind of talk about their business, what is a tip that you would give them um, for success or just to get through that period? Oh, man, I can't be so lame to, to go with Star Wars quotes, but unlearn what you've learned. That's yeah. That's and that's not just for this that's for any industry and mostly the sales industry and if you're starting your own business you're in the sales industry and in my experience previously in the sales industry and i found it to be pretty accurate as well as any industry is say you say you're a salesman and you're trained in the sales method to sell this product and then you get fired and then you go to another sales company what they would prefer that you never learned anything from that previous job because so many people do it a different way of different philosophies. So what most sales companies do, as you can see by looking at their like onboarding is they try and get young, dumb men and women um, so they can fill them up with their BS as opposed to someone else's BS first. So the, the first thing you want to do, and it's very hard but easy advice is to unlearn what you've learned from the apps you're currently working with as far as how easy the work is, how, how, it, how everything works, because the way that you're currently doing it is not the way it should be done. And a lot of people want to hold on to that. They want to turn on their dumpling app and do their MySpace coding page and be like, this is me. Where's the work? Dumpling's supposed to give me work. Where's the work? Where's the money? And, and that's where people get disappointed and they get frustrated and, and then everyone is unhappy. Um, so that's like the starting point. And then the fun begins after that. After you forget everything you've learned that is not useful in starting a dumpling app, then you can go back to it once you get kind of a little bit of a pipeline built and start going back to the things you've learned from those other apps and how you would change them. And if you're really fearless, you can do that at the beginning. Be like, I hate all this stuff about Instacart. I'm doing it this way on dumpling. And you can do that. But just like make sure that you go at your pace, your rate of <clears throat> engagement and, and knowledge and, and what you have doing. Be realistic. If you're not realistic with yourself, you're, you're not going to be successful either. Um, yeah. So just uh, kind of let go of everything and, and try something new and see what works and what doesn't work. And you have the freedom to throw out what doesn't work and try something new. You can't do that with any really other app. That's spot on. Awesome. Well, I think one last question. You have been around for such a long time, probably even longer than I have. Or I, I just you told you I'm going to be 40 soon. Stop saying how long I've been around. The years I don't are mean by. like that. <laughs> with dumpling on the platform. I mean, you were around with my gig, correct? Back when yeah. before we were dumpling. So you have you grown with us through all of these years. Out of everything that we've kind of changed or evolved into today, do you have like a favorite thing that's on the app, whether it's a feature or just something that's really helped your business? Um, because I mean, we went from no apps to where, you know, people were just writing in on a box on the internet and sending you just a list with no pictures, no pricing, nothing. And it's completely different today. Um, so I'd love to hear, you know, if you have any favorites or anything that you just really have loved. Two things. Um, I'm the keep it simple guy. Um, so I don't, you know, I like all the stuff for other people. I realize I'm not the only user of the platform. So, you know, and, and all of that. Um, so two things is the first one is in-app chat. Oh my God. So I'm, I'm wordy when it comes to this stuff. And, and again, that like having to go from the app to like texting, Google voice texting, all that stuff was just not fun in the store, especially at like Trader Joe's when you're like, height of COVID and you're like trying to find a corner, then you get chased out of that corner, then you got to go to the other corner. You know, it, 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 it wasn't fun to have to do that. So having in-app chat is great. 
um, especially gifts, because like I speak in gifts as well. So that's fun to have. Um, and then the other thing I already mentioned is the automated messaging marketing stuff. Um, I'm not someone that really wants to reach out at the end of the night and be like, hey, do you need anything or that? People do it. I don't. You know, once I deliver your order, like I have to think of the next one. And when I'm home at the end of the night after eight, 10, 12 hours in traffic in the grocery store, like I'm not doing homework. Like I, so the automated aspect of that has really helped sustain the business as I lowered my energy input into it. So it was really a nice, like one to 1.5 trade off where I was actually probably getting more business just from that um the automated messaging so definitely play with all those features and learn them like honestly i haven't even looked at like and i love it and i've always said to have it and there always has been a version of it but like the whole school tutorials training all that stuff uh, that you guys have available for free to everyone who wants to look at dumpling as an option for them all of those things i'm sure are amazing so look at all of those um I plan on doing it as well in the coming days and weeks as I think about building this uh, social media kind of platform of where I'll be doing the videos of like, here's what I did today. Here's how I marketed. Click, click, all that fun stuff. Um, how to build a business uh, in not your hometown on Dumpling, basically. Uh, that's kind of how I see the start of it. And uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, those two features. Chat and automated marketing messages to get people thinking of you. That's a perfect answer because those features were designed to help people who were busy have better use of their time while still maintaining customer relationships. And that is kind of all of what your business is about. So even if you're not using some of the other features, it's so helpful to know that someone like you who is busy, those ones are helping. Um, that's exactly what they were made for. So um, it's awesome to hear. And uh, with that, are there any anything else that you would like to share with us or anybody that may be watching today um, at all? Yes. Dumpling is the future of employment in the next yesterday to 20 years. It is already in motion. It is already going to happen, whether you are a real estate agent, a lawyer, this, that, or the other thing. Is if you currently work underneath a middle manager, a manager, a boss, or anything, you are already 10 years behind in the future of employment and money making in this country. You, you have to think of yourself and being able to start your own thing and being able to set your own prices for your own skill sets and stop going to an office that is basically paying you nothing to make someone you don't even know much richer than they need to be stop wasting energy and time on apps like Instacart, DoorDash, and all these other ones that, that we're familiar with because their business model is, is, currently is, always has been and always will be a way to steal your labor from you and to trick you into doing it every day. Take one day out of this week when you're working six or seven days in the traditional gig economy and do some research on Dumpling. Reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, do whatever. Reach out to these guys on Twitter. Ask questions. Take one day because in that one day, you're probably only making about 70 bucks, but you're spending about 35 in gas to do it. Don't do that anymore. That's a good way to end up homeless with no car that's blown out from DoorDash deliveries and you are now living at a rest stop with your grub hub bags and your DoorDash bags and your Uber Eats bags blocking your windows because it's 20 degrees out. You don't wanna be in that position. Start now, start yesterday, keep doing what the traditional gigs if you need to, but start building your own thing with Dumpling. And if there are other apps like it that give you the power to set your own rates and find your own clients, the two main things of being an actual business owner, independent contractor, do it now, ask for help, believe in yourself. Exactly. I think the way you worded that is perfect. And then within that, right, it, it keeps you closer to connected to your community as well, um, which is automatically going to make you more successful because you're thinking about what the customer wants as well as what you want, where when you're timed, you don't necessarily have that flexibility. So, so Matt, they pray on your psychology and don't allow them to do that. You know, use your own psychology for good and don't let them use your own psychology against you for profit. Matt, what is your Twitter handle, if you don't mind sharing that? 
It's just uh, my name at Matthew Tellis, T E L L E S. Awesome. And we'll or you can search the grocery guy if you want to, you know, find like the, all that fun stuff too. Um, getting away from that, hopefully, because I'm just so done with fighting them. Like, just be better than them and, and grow this business. And, you know, it's just so much wasted energy, cyber bullying millionaires on the internet. You know, they'll get theirs eventually. <laughs> Great. Well, we will add those to the comments of the YouTube as well. So people are able to contact you um, or your, take a look at your business, whatever they want. And we'll also include the help center um, link as well. So if you guys are wanting to get in contact with either myself or Ashley, you can always go through the help center chat and then contact a coach as well. We're always at, uh, happy to help there. Well, perfect. So Matthew, thank you so much. We appreciate that you took the time today to chat with us and just share about all of the experiences both prior to your business and within your business because you have so much knowledge. I know I myself and I'm speaking for Ashley, but I think she would agree. We have learned so much from you over the years and we just, we love you to death. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and I think the whole team would say the same thing. You have been such a huge help within Dumpling over these years. And I don't think we'd be where we are today if we didn't have just that knowledge and expertise of, you know, you within the gig economy and just saying, things need to be better. So thank you for that. And just, you know, being that light that so many of us kind of needed in such a dark time. I know when I was in the gig economy, it was, it was rough, but having people like you, just knowing we weren't alone, it definitely helped and it. Only it pushed me to start my business. And now I'm here today with a business and working for the company. So uh, we really, really enjoyed chatting with you today. So again, thank you so much. I definitely I'm second got the, that. <laughs> I'm lucky I got the good eye drops because my eyes are tearing up right now, you buttheads. <laughs> I know when when I was at kind of my worst in the gig economy and just really being kind of run ragged doing gig work, you were the person who just kept telling me until it finally got through to my head, you got to check out this dumpling thing. You would be a better fit for this. This would work better for you. It took me a while to actually absorb it. So thank you for the persistence. <laughs> but once... I did. Even then, I was very slow to start it and then eventually kind of kicked it off. And it was instantly better for me at home and my parenting relationship and my time and my confidence. Um, and then obviously led us to this point, which who could have imagined that a few years ago um, when we were just chatting about ways to make it better for workers. But um, I know there's several of us in this sort of space who wouldn't be here without you have taking that moment to say, no, this, this isn't working for you. This is a better fit. Um, so thank you for always finding the Ashley's on the internet and kind of pushing them to where they need to be, because it makes a huge difference. Oh, love you guys. You guys are awesome. My pleasure. And a thank you from the business owners as well, because we know, and we don't see it all, but we know you are a huge help to people behind the scenes. Um, so just being that kind of advocate and just being somebody that they can kind of lean on or ask questions Thank you. Like that is such a huge help to us. And we really, that's, I know how I started before I was a coach here is just like, all right, I want to tell you everything. If you're willing to listen, this is how I got started. So mm -hmm. you are amazing. You really, really are. And if you ever need somebody to tell you that you just give us a call. <laughs> too much, too much. No, I, I, I wish I could do more. I, 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 I don't do enough. I wish I could do more. And uh, I look forward to doing more in the future. Awesome. Well, we'll cheer you on whatever you do. Absolutely. Yeah. You get that TikTok. You let us know because I'm going to be your first subscriber. Absolutely. Oh, you're going to have to talk to my manager, Alyssa, on that one. She's going to be running that. She's the TikTok expert. We'll, mess with her. we'll make sure. There you, you do. go. She'll love it. She'll love it. Thank you. All right. Well, you guys take care. I'll talk to you guys later. Perfect. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks so much. You too. Bye, guys.